Hi there everyone, my name is Susie and I'm a first year math student from the University of Warwick. We are currently coming to the end of term one and after the initial kind of excitement slash complete and utter panic of moving away to university, I like to think I'm pretty settled in. Freshers was a great time to meet new people, to explore the campus and to get settled into my accommodation, but the maths course itself obviously is a whole other kettle of fish. It starts off quite nicely where it's mostly recapping A-level content and making sure that everyone is at the same level, but then once it starts the new content, it can be a little bit overwhelming as you're suddenly learning all of these new things, which is both very exciting, but obviously requires a lot of work. So I sat down and I thought about like, first of all, what are the questions that I had about the course, which I couldn't seem to find answers for. And also what are some of the things that I didn't even think about back when I was in year 13. So with all that in mind, here are some things that I wish someone had told me before my first week at university level maths. Number one is make sure you have an idea of what kind of modules you're going to want to take. Obviously, I can't speak for all the departments here, but one of the things I really liked about um, Warwick Maths was the fact that you can take modules from all over, not even just from within the maths department. I wanted to take computer science modules and physics modules and philosophy modules, and Warwick lets you do that. However, because there are so many choices, um, I very quickly kind of became overwhelmed, I left it to the last minute, and then when I tried to apply for a certain philosophy module, it was already full and I couldn't do it. So if you get, you know, if you get um, sorted earlier and you register for all the modules as soon as you can, you're going to avoid having the same problems that I did. Obviously though, you don't want to go in completely blind and that's when research comes really in handy. The first place I would recommend going to would be the undergraduate handbook, which can be found on the Warwick website because that has all the information you're going to need. It has the name of the course, what content will be covered, your lecturers, how many seminars you'll have a week most of the time, and even, you know, what style of examination you're going to have at the end of it. Also, once you're at Warwick itself, you can talk to your personal tutor, other people in your year, other people in the year above, because they'll also have, you know, a first-hand experience of taking the modules. The thing is though, you know, even if you're sat on the fence about a module, um, the maths department very much has a try before you buy approach, or at least does in in the kind of in the in the sense that I have got it, where if you take a module and then you know a couple of lectures in, you're kind of like this isn't what I thought it would be. I'm not really enjoying this. Um, they do make it quite easy for you to drop out. You know, obviously assuming it's not a core module and you still have the minimum number of cats that you need. So. If you take more modules than you think you're going to need at the beginning of the year, then if it turns out that you don't like one of them, you can drop it. Or maybe it turns out that you have a whole new interest you never even knew that you had. Basically, just be willing to try new modules, do your research, and try and go in to the math scores as much as possible, knowing what modules you're going to want to take. Number two seems so obvious, I almost shouldn't say it, but at the same time it's so important that I am going to say it. And that is, you need to stay on top of work as much as possible. I already mentioned that in the first couple of lectures for each of my modules, um, there was a much slower pace where lecturers were just covering, you know, A-level content and introducing themselves and introducing the module in general. But very, very quickly, it did then start to get to be a lot of work, um, especially as you started getting set assignments. One of the main differences I have found between A-level and degree level maths is just how quickly you cover content. So then when I started to get behind, it felt like it was almost impossible to catch up because there was just so much more happening on top of the stuff I hadn't done. However, I have now caught up with all of it. So I guess that's a smaller sub point that you need to try to keep up with the work. But if you don't actually keep up with the work, there are people around you going through the exact same thing. So you shouldn't panic you are gonna be able to catch up with it and you just have to try your best to keep on top of it as much as you can. It's gonna make your life easier if you don't fall behind, but if you do, you will be able to recover. You will be fine. Following on from that, point number three is I cannot recommend enough the merits of a good timetable because once I made one, it felt like everything kind of just fell into place with, I felt like I was more organised, I was using my time well, and I was getting all my assignments done with plenty of time to spare. 
which is just such a nice relaxing feeling um, and it also I think helps to establish this kind of sense of routine which moving away to university is a big change so having that sense of like knowing what you're going to be doing with the day really helped at least for me to kind of make me feel more at ease here. Obviously some people prefer different styles of timetable but the one that I currently use splits my day into hour long chunks with two hours of working then one hour of break uh, in the middle of it. This just helps me to know exactly what I'm doing and when, when I'm going to be doing my assignments, when I'll do extra content and when I'll have some time for the extracurriculars because those are important too. If you get yourself sorted, if you even just know what kind of day you're going to do an assignment on, it's going to help you just make sure that you get everything done that needs to be done and it's going to eliminate a lot of stress from your life. Number four is a quite a math specific example but then also has applications kind of everywhere which is make sure you understand the basics before you try and understand the hard stuff and in particular for maths that is make sure you understand the notation. I came to university having done extra reading and extra research into areas I was interested in but notation is the kind of thing where I was like well you know it's so easy I, I mostly understand it you know what, what can the problem be and then I get into my first lectures and lecturers use this stuff like it's second nature to them because it is, you know, they, they do this stuff without thinking. But for me, I was, you know, having to understand all these really difficult concepts as well as having to take the extra brain power to be like understanding what the notation was. It's just another barrier in your learning which you don't need. And even if you think, you know, it's so easy, there's no point going over it, just taking the time to like make some flashcards or get someone to test you or just rereading kind of a list of what the notation is, is gonna, you know, it can't hurt you and it might mean that you can understand something more easily than you previously could. So you've got nothing to lose by just making sure that you are 100% firm in all of the basics. Number five is that help is available and is actually really good. I'm not gonna take the time to go over every single form of academic help that Warwick provides because they provide a lot of them and me reading off a list that you can just find on the Warwick website probably won't help you but I want to particularly draw attention to your personal tutor and your supervisor. I have meetings with them once a week each and they are the people who nine times out of ten if I have an issue I will go to them because I've had really positive experiences with getting help from them and even if they don't know how to fix a problem they normally know someone who can fix the problem so they can just send me their email which is very nice and convenient. The thing is you know even in university it's very hard to escape this kind of mentality of like I don't want to I don't want to ask for help because I'm afraid that I'll get in trouble for having done something wrong or people are going to think that I'm stupid or you know it's going to be like a really formal process but every time I've needed help everyone I've gone to has been so kind and so supportive with all of the problems and pretty much every problem that I've had has been dealt with which has been quite <laughs> obviously obviously good because I don't want to have problems but it's also been very reassuring that, you know, even at the higher level, you are still, you are still a, a human and you are still going to make mistakes, but people in work are going to recognise that you're human, that you make mistakes and they are here to help you. So you're never, you're never going to be, you know, it's never going to be too small a problem or it's never going to be too dumb a question or it's never going to be, you know, too informal a request. If you have a problem, you deserve to get the help for it and we're gonna try, gonna try and provide it for you. So I hope I've helped you to think about the kind of things you're gonna have to think about before you come to university and your first week of the course. If I had to kind of boil this down, I guess I would say just try and be as organized as much as possible, just in general. And also remember that you are a human who's allowed to make mistakes, so you will be able to rectify those mistakes get help and get back on track if you need to. If you have any questions, you can always contact me directly, but I hope you have enjoyed watching and thank you very much.